Hi, I'm Zach and you're watching Bite Sized. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a Z-Wave home automation hub using a Z-Wave controller and a Raspberry Pi running some software called Home Assistant. A couple weeks ago, I found something really cool on Make Magazine's MakerShare website. If you're not familiar with MakerShare, it's a website where the community of makers can post and share what they're working on. MakerShare is teaming up with Sigma Designs to put on something called the Z-Wave Smart Home Maker Challenge. The challenge is pretty simple. They want makers to submit home automation project ideas. And to help them complete those projects, they'll send a free kit that includes a Z-Wave controller, a Raspberry Pi, and your choice of one Z-Wave device from their website. The grand prize is a paid trip to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. If you want to see me win the grand prize, I'll leave a link in the description where you can upvote my project. If you want to participate in this contest, I'll leave a link in the description where you can fill out your own project idea and receive a free Raspberry Pi kit. The project idea that I submitted was to be able to control my dumb entertainment devices that use infrared remotes with a Z-Wave device. So after submitting my project, I received this box in the mail a few weeks later. The first thing I need to do to set up a Z-Wave home automation hub is to download a Home Assistant image and flash it to an SD card. To do this, go to homeassistant.io and click on Getting Started. There are several ways to get Home Assistant on the Raspberry Pi, but I guess the new preferred method is using a HASIO image. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, so I clicked on that link to download the appropriate image. While I was on this page, I went ahead and downloaded Etcher, which is an open source application that allows you to flash an image to an SD card. I inserted a 16GB SD card into my computer and opened up Etcher. I browsed to the Home Assistant image I just downloaded, selected the SD card, and clicked Flash. This took quite a while. Once it was finished flashing, I added my Wi-Fi credentials to the appropriate config file and took the card out of my computer. Next, I inserted the card into the Raspberry Pi and plugged in the power supply. According to the Home Assistant website, on first boot up, HasIO should run on its own and do an update. I waited for at least an hour before deciding that it wasn't working. I ended up connecting the Raspberry Pi directly to my router with an Ethernet cable and rebooted. This seemed to do the trick. After 30 minutes or so, I came back and was able to look up the Raspberry Pi's IP address in my router settings. While I was there, I went ahead and assigned it a permanent static IP address of 192.168.0.121. To start using Home Assistant, I just need to open a web browser and point it to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. The Home Assistant web server uses port 8123. The first thing I did in HasIO was to enable an SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi. I guess this is disabled by default. Once that was done, I could use the FTP plugin in Notepad++ to browse the file system on the Raspberry Pi and find a file called configuration.yaml. This is the file that I need to edit to do pretty much everything in Home Assistant. Before I can use the Sigma Designs USB Z-Wave controller, I need to tell Home Assistant where to find the USB device. I copied and pasted this line into the configuration.yaml file. Now I can plug the Z-Wave controller into a USB port on the Raspberry Pi. At this point, I did some combination of restarting the Z-Wave network, restarting Home Assistant, and rebooting the Raspberry Pi. Pretty much every step in this whole setup process failed on my first attempt. The solution was usually giving up and coming back the next day only to see things start to work like they should. I knew I had succeeded when I saw the Z-Wave configuration menu in Home Assistant. At this point, my Z-Wave hub is ready to accept some Z-Wave devices. As I said earlier, my goal is to use this Z-Wave infrared remote to control my TV. I opened up the Z-Wave control panel and clicked on Add Node, which puts the Z-Wave controller into inclusion mode. Next, I needed to press the button on the infrared remote to pair it with the Z-Wave controller. One blink of the red LED was an indication that the inclusion was successful. Here's where things started to go south. I'm not really an expert on Z-Wave devices, and so I didn't realize until this point that the Z-Wave infrared remote that the MakerShare Challenge sent me wasn't a universal infrared remote, but instead designed to be used specifically for climate control devices such as wall-mounted air conditioners. Every Z-Wave device has predefined parameters, and you can set these parameters to certain values. The Z-Wave infrared remote that I received can only be used to send commands to an air conditioner. I'm really bummed that I couldn't get this to work. It's very possible that I'm just missing something very simple to get this all working. If that's the case, maybe somebody with more experience in Home Assistant can leave a comment below and help me out here. I think at this point that I'm gonna put this project on the back burner and maybe come back to it sometime in the future. This was still a really great learning experience. I learned how to install Home Assistant, which can be a very powerful tool in the right hands. I have to say that it was way more difficult than I had anticipated. 
I'm usually pretty good at setting up and configuring applications like this, but Home Assistant was particularly difficult. I am not giving up, however, on my goal to control my TV using smart home technology. I have been kicking around an idea in the back of my head for several years that involves an ESP8266 and an IR LED. I still want to try to make my own Wi-Fi enabled IR remote, so stay tuned for that. So that about wraps up this video. If you missed my video where I built a Stranger Things message wall, click on this thumbnail here. If you want to see how a $5 Wi-Fi switch is all you need to get started in home automation, click on this thumbnail. Here on Bite Sized, I make a ton of projects like this. If that's something you're into, be sure to click on this subscribe button and YouTube will start recommending you more videos like this. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.